Hello everyone, I'm Cassie, Marketing Specialist from GenScript. Today's topic for the webinar session is Detection Method for COVID-19 and vaccine, de vaccine Development Progress. I'm very excited to introduce you the presenter today, Dr. Edward Wong. He's the Field Application Scientist in GenScript. He completed his PhD degree from University of Adelaide and he worked as a postdoctoral fellow at National Cancer Centre Singapore for three years. So in NCC, he has successfully reported the predictive factors for genetic screening of BRCA1 and BRCA2. He also reported the importance of genetic testing for 25 breast, breast cancer predisposition genes using NGS technology. Both his work were reported in PLOS1 and NPJ Genomic Medicine. This, me this webinar will take around 45 minutes. If you have any questions, please feel free to type in the questions field that you can see on your screen, and we'll be answering them after the presentation. But if we didn't, if, but if we didn't get to answer your question during the Q&A session, we'll be sure to take down and we'll email back to you. We'll record this webinar and it will be available on demand on our website after today. So lastly, here's the list of the upcoming webinars that we are going to roll out on the following weeks. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Edward to start his presentation. Dr. Edward, over to you right now. All right. Thank you for the introductions and good day, everyone. It's such a great honor to be invited and be part of the webinar programs that are organized by GenScript. So one of the hot topics that um, in the news these days and hopefully it goes away real soon is the coronavirus. The rapidly spread of this virus has sparked the alarm worldwide. So what is coronavirus? And to date, what are the health experts doing to stop the virus? Last week, we had uh, Professor Wang Lingfa who gave a wonderful overview about SARS-CoV-2 virus. And today I will continue with this topic to share with you guys some of the information and also our current understanding about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. I will be talking about the detections method that are currently available in the market in order to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And lastly, I will briefly discuss about the current progress of the vaccine and drug development that against the COVID-19 disease. So let's look back at the history. Um, the coronaviruses had actually caused two epidemics in the recent years. The SARS virus, which was first reported in Guangdong uh, in the end of 2002, and had infected more than 8,000 people globally and killed more than 700 people. The MERS virus, which was first reported in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Since then, about 2,500 of the MERS cases had been identified across 27 countries and have killed more than 800 people. And now we are facing the threat from the COVID-19, which was first reported in Wuhan in the end of 2019 and has now spread it across worldwide. As of yesterday, the SARS-CoV-2 virus had infected more than 1.44 million people worldwide and killed more than 83,000 people. And the most scary thing is these numbers are still increasing. So on 11th of March, the WHO had declared the COVID-19 outbreak as a pandemic. As I mentioned earlier, this deadly virus has widely spread across 209 countries and killed over 83,000 people globally. The severely affected countries such as the China, the Italy, the France, Spain, India, and Malaysia have implemented an aggressive measurement, such as locking down the cities and even the entire nation in order to combat against the virus. While this measurement may seem to slow down the virus, but it has disrupted the countries in uh, many ways, such as the manufacturing sector in China that includes the medical supply. And we all know that before the pandemic, China was the world's largest mass manufacturer. And the shutdown of the operations have led to the shortage of the protective gear supply, such as the mask and protective suits for the, 
uh, health workers. So this has led to the other countries started to stockpile and ban the exportations of the protective gears. The experts have warned that uh, this measurement could worsen the shortfall and making the poorer countries more vulnerable against the, uh, the spread of the virus. In addition to this, the outbreak has hit the global demand and supplied so badly that the OECD has one of the global contractions with the GTT growth slashed down to 2.4% from 2.9%. The world leaders have also called upon the cancellations of the major events this year, including the Tokyo Olympic 2020. So in a nutshell, the pandemic has affected our daily lives badly. Before we discuss the, uh, the coronavirus, we should first to understand what virus is. We know that you know, the virus is very different from the bacteria. A structure is simple, that composed of a capsid protein to protect the genetic materials, such as uh, the viral DNA and the viral RNA. The shapes of the virus can be varied, including the spherical-like uh, virus, such as the influenza, the helical-like virus, such as the tobacco mosaic virus, the polygonal-like uh, virus, such as the adenovirus, as well as the complicated bacterial fudge that compose of a polygonal head with a rod-shaped tail with long filaments. And the coronavirus is just one of them. Why would it be called a coronavirus? Um, it is due to the possession of the crown-like structure under the microscope. Here I show you a picture to discuss the source of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. According to Professor Wang Lingfa last week, that the majority of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, the coronaviruses, are originated from the bat. Scientists have found that their unique immune system have made them a reservoir species for many of the viruses. So when these viruses infect uh, the other organisms, it can cause the destructive disease to the others. But fortunately, we don't come into contact with bats uh, very often. And therefore, these viruses need to infect the intermediate host before they transfect to the human. Taking the SARS in 2002 as an example, it is believed that the spread of the virus was from the civet cat, and the MERS virus was through camel. And this time, the scientists suggested that the pangolin could be the prime suspect, but a more conclusive proof has yet to be found. Here I show you an image of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that released by the National Institute of Allergy and Infection Disease. The coronaviruses is a large group of the viruses. They are the positive sense single strand RNA virus. The genetic materials are surrounded by the envelope proteins. So there are different types of the coronaviruses that can cause the respiratory diseases and some can even cause the gastrointestinal diseases. The respiratory diseases can range from the common cold to the pneumonia, but often they are all in a mild symptoms. Nevertheless, some can cause the severe symptoms, such as the SARS, the MERS, and also the COVID-19. So how can the coronavirus hijack our human cell body? The coronaviruses with the spike proteins can mediate the infection by binding to the targeted specific receptor, known as the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 with high binding affinity. The S protein contains of the two putative subunits, known as the S1 subunit and the S2 subunit. The S1 subunit is defined as the receptor binding domain, and the S2 subunit has been found can mediate the membrane fusions between the virus and the cell. Based on our understanding to the structure, there are several types of the detection assays that are available in the market at the moment, including uh, firstly, uh, the nucleic acid-based detection assay with the use of the next generation sequencing, the QRT-PCR, isothermal amplification, and CRISPR. The serial-based tests, including the ELISA, chemiluminescent immunoassay, 
the colloidal gold immunoassay can also be used for the detection to detect the antibody or the antigens in a serum. Other clinical diagnostic tools such as the use of a chest CT imaging can also be used for detection. The hallmark of the COVID-19 disease is the presence of the bilateral nodular and peripheral ground glass uh, with the consolidative pulmonary opacities. Uh, some regular blood tests can also be used to evaluate the hepatic function in the SARS patients. Several studies have shown an abnormal level in the liver alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, and lactic dehydrogenase uh, in the infected patients. And these are the regular blood tests that are being done in the clinic. So today, I'm going to spend more time to discuss about the two most commonly used detection methods to detect the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. They are the nucleic acid-based detection assay, as well as the serum-based uh, detection assay. So the sequencing of the virus using the next generation sequencing in combination with the epidemiological data help us to characterize and understand the identity of the virus and to tell us whether or not this virus is changing and how it's being transmitted. On January 24th, the first SARS-CoV-2 genome was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And on February 7th, over 80 genomes have been shared through the GIS AID and GenBank in order to help the researchers to accelerate their research as well as the vaccine and drug development. In addition to this, uh, the success in sequencing of the SARS-CoV-2 virus genome enabled the development of the PCR-based diagnostic that helps for rapid identifications of the infected individuals. Currently, there are a few companies have developed the novel coronavirus nucleic acid sequencing kits for production, such as the Da'an genes from the China, the Falgen Genetics and its China-based joint venture, the Arbor Bioscience with its coronavirus target panel. However, the next generation sequencing requires a sophisticated bioinformatic tool and a fast data processing and a large data storage, which can be costly that hinder the widespread use of this technology for detection. However, uh, the prospect is still promising. The QRT-PCR is a mainstream of the detection method for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The mechanism is simple, with an addition of the fluorescent substance to the reactions, and through a special PCR instrument, the real-time fluorescent can be detected and the results will be read. And this technology can perform the quantitative calculations on the PCR template. There are several improved versions of this technology, such as the Techman probe method, the dual or multiplex fluorescent PCR. So currently, there are over 100 companies have developed or are still developing the QRT PCR detection assay to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus in order to improve the sensitivity and specificity. So the isothermal amplifications has also been proven for the SARS-CoV-2 virus detections uh, without the loss of its sensitivity and specificity. Unlike the QRT-PCR that requires the change of the temperatures during the amplification step, the isothermal amplification technology uses only one temperature for amplifications, and therefore the requirement of a special instrument is low. On the other hand, CRISPR, uh, it's a well-known technology in the field of the genome editing. It has been shown that the ability to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus as well. This technology utilized the CRISPR-Cas 13-based RNA detection technology called Sherlock and was developed by the Broad Institute and Harvard Institute. Uh, the key principle is very simple. Um, under the guidance of the guide RNA and after binding to the specific RNA, it will trigger the cutting ability of the case 13 endonuclease on the viral RNA, including the reporter. The sample is then applied to a commercial detection system for result analysis. In addition to this, another group of the scientists have developed a similar technology called HOMES with the use of the Cas12 endonuclease. The principle works exactly as the, uh, the Sherlock technology. The only difference is uh, the HOMES technology requires the conversions of the RNA into DNA. 
So this table summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of the nucleic acid-based detection methods that I mentioned earlier. So the next generation sequencing provides a high accuracy sequencing data, but a high cost of the instrument and the sophisticated of the bioinformatics tool has hindered the widespread use of this technology for detection. The QRT-PCR, on the other hand, is a well-known gold standard method due to its high sensitivity and specificity. But this technology requires a special PCR instrument that can be costly. And recently, a high false negative rates have been reported. The isothermal amplification method can achieve a similar sensitivity and specificity as a QRT-PCR without the use of a, a special PCR instrument. And therefore, uh, but this technology requires a special primer design. The study has shown that the non-specific binding of this primer can cause the false positive result. Uh, lastly, the CRISPR uh, has been shown to have the ability to detect the viral DNA or the viral RNA. But the experts suggested that this technology should combine with the nucleic acid-based amplification technology in order to increase the sensitivity. So the NGS sequencing data reported that the entire SARS-CoV-2 virus genome is approximately 30,000 base pair in length. That encodes for 10 different proteins, as you can see from the picture here. Therefore, the scientists established a detection assay that based on these sequences, that encode the unique proteins. The entire detection workflow include the sample collections, the nucleic acid extractions, the real-time PCR and results evaluations. And I will step-by-step step brief you guys to the workflow. So uh, there are several types of the specimens, biological specimens that we can collect for the test. Um, as we know that the SARS-CoV-2 virus can cause the respiratory illness. Therefore, the respiratory system is the prime target where the sample should be collected. The respiratory system includes the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. And the most commonly types of the uh, collection method is through the nasal swab, oral swab, the sputum, the bronchoalveolar fluid, as well as the respiratory tract fluid. Well, just a side note here, as we know that the ACE2 receptor is mostly expressed in the lung, it would be more accurate to collect the specimen from the lung. But this invasive method could have caused uh, the discomfort feeling to the patients. And depending on the stage of the illness, the blood samples and the conjunctiva swabs can also be collected for the detections. The recent study have shown that the RNA that extracted from the stool can also be used for the, the detections. And this has further supported that the saliva and the feces are the most common transmission pathway for the virus. So this will then follow by the RNA extraction from the specimens. So as I mentioned, majority of the submitted samples currently are oral swabs or sputum. However, it's always challenging to extract a good quality of RNA from these specimens due to its high viscosity and the presence of a high concentration of protein. Therefore, these samples need to be liquefied by going through a special treatment such as the sonications. The sensitivity and accuracy of the assay are highly dependent on the quality of the um, RNA. And therefore, after the extractions, the, QER, uh, the qPCR will be carried out using the Techman probe-based assay. So um, this is a simplified diagram that shows the, uh, the Techman probe-based assay. But due to the limitation of the, uh, the time limitations, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But what I would like to highlight here is with the use of the Techman prop base assay, it allows us to target the specific viral gene, uh, gene expressions of the submitted specimen. Alternatively, uh, the virus can also be detected using the isothermal amplifications, such as the RT lamp assay. The beauty of this method is the amplification doesn't require the change of the temperature in each step. And this allowed the amplification to be done without the use of a PCR instrument. For an example, after the sample collections followed by the RNA extraction, the sample can be amplified under the control of a selected temperature. And lastly, 
based on the different reported dyes used, uh, the positive and the negative samples can be distinguished either by uh, naked eyes or using the UV light. So uh, to help with the detection assay development, both the China CDC and the WHO have made the suggestion to target the three different viral genes, including uh, the of one ab gene, the E gene, and the N gene. Uh, there are two different targeted positions uh, located in the of one ab genes. They are the of one ab positions, and another one is located at the positions where it encodes the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So here I show you the sequences of the primers and its corresponded uh, probes that released by uh, the China CDC and WHO. So GenScript offers both uh, the single genes one-step detection approach and a one-step uh, two genes detection approach with the combinations of the N and O gene and R and E genes. Uh, GenScript performed the quality assurance to ensure the quality of our products to meet its specifications. So all of our primers and probes are HPLC purified, and we make sure that there is no detections of the CT values among the non-template control uh, to ensure that no occurrence of the contaminations. In addition to this, each of our positive controls demonstrated a CT value ranging from the 25 to 30, indicating a high sensitivity and good quality of our primers and probes. So although the SARS-CoV-2 nucleic acid QRT PCR test has become the standard method for the diagnosis of the SARS-CoV-2 infection, and these real-time PCR test kits have many limitations. A, um, as I mentioned, a high false negative rates have been reported. And B, uh, this test only looks for the genetic materials of the virus, for instance, the saliva, nasal, or anal swab. The one huge uh, major drawback is that they only give a positive results when the virus is still present. Uh, this could mean that uh, this test unable to identify the people who went through an infection, recover, or clearance of the virus from their bodies. So in order to overcome the limitations of the nucleic acid-based detection assay, the researchers have developed the serial-based detection method. So this test uh, enables us to have a better understanding of the epidemiology of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. On the 17th of February, an article that published in Emerging Microbes and Infections have proven the feasibility of using the serial-based test to confirm the infections. And the advantage of using this test uh, is it allows us to quickly identify a large number of the infected patients and asymptomatic carriers in an accurate and rapid manner in order to prevent the virus transmission and assure the timely treatments of patients. In a nutshell, the serial-based test for the COVID-19 is attractive because uh, the relative short time to diagnosis and the ability to test for an active immune response against the virus. So there are several types of the serial-based tests, including the ELISA, the chemiluminescent immunoassay, the colloidal gold immunoassay. So this immunoassay rely on the ability of the antibodies to recognize and bind to the macromolecules known as the antigens or an areas on an antigen to which uh, the antibody bind to, um, which is called an epitope. So for an example, uh, the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus carries a multiple proteins on the surface. And these proteins include the multiple epitopes. Using the principle of antigens and antibody binding, the antibody can be used to detect uh, the presence of antigen proving the samples containing the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Or we can utilize this immunoassay to measure the antibody uh, that presents in the blood. We know that after the virus infections, uh, the immune cells in the, uh, in the human body are stimulated to produce a specific antibodies. So the IgM is the primary antibody followed by the IgG. Similarly, using the principle of specific binding between the IgG and IgM, 
we can indirectly proving that the human has been infected by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The ELISA is a plant-based assay technique that designs for the detections and quantifications of the substances, including the proteins, the peptides, and the antigens, and so on. So in an ELISA, an antigen must be immobilized in a, uh, to a solid phase and then complex with an antibody that is linked to an enzyme. So the detection is done by assessing the enzyme activity by incubating with substrate to produce a measurable product, such as the change of the color as shown here, indicating the presence of the protein of interest in the samples. Or with the modification of the basic principle, it can also be used to detect the, um, the IgM or IgG antibody in the blood samples. The chemiluminescent immunoassay works the same as the ELISA. Uh, the only difference for that is that uh, they utilize the chemical probes that generates the light emissions uh, through the chemical reactions. So uh, the colloidal gold immunochromatography strip assay is more a rapid and direct measurement in order to detect the surface antigens of a SARS-CoV-2 virus using the antibody or a measurement on a serum to detect the IgM or IgG antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 virus using the virus antigen products. Um, the mechanism is very simple. So you will have a strip that with a chamber that filled with the antibody that conjugated with the gold nanoparticles. So the sample is loaded onto the strip and the antigens will be recognized and bind with the antibody. As it flows through, uh, the other side of the strip is filled with the capture antibody that could uh, they can capture the, uh, the antigens. So uh, the detection is done by assessing uh, the test line. So here I show you, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, bottom right corner is how we can actually read uh, the, uh, the test. When uh, the sample is positive, the test line will show up. On the other hand, if it's a negative sample, uh, this test line will remain, uh, this test line area will remain blank. So this table uh, summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of the nucleic acid-based detection assay and the serial-based detection assay. So as I mentioned earlier just now, the nucleic acid-based detection assay is a gold standard detection assay due to its high sensitivity and the specificity. However, uh, this method required the use of a speci uh, the special PCI instrument uh, that can be costly and also a high false negative rates have been reported. On the other hand, uh, the serial-based test is fast, cheap, and without the use of the special instrument. But the drawbacks are the limitations of its sensitivity and specificity. And also, uh, this test, there could be a delay of, uh, the, of the test because uh, due to the requirement of an incubation period for, uh, to generate a sufficient amount of the antibodies like the IgG or the IgM. And also, this test uh, can be easily disrupted by the background, such as the presence of the cytokines that may cause the false positive result. Therefore, the health expert suggested the combinations of the PCR-based test with the serial-based test in order to increase the sensitivity of the testing. And by having these two tests, it would allow us to have a confirmation of the infection rather than relying on the single test. So here I show you what GenStrip can offer in order to help the researchers to develop the assay. To test for the SARS-CoV-2 virus and antigens, uh, GenScript has the nuclear capsid proteins and the spike proteins for the antigens, and also the antibody that target on the nuclear capsid proteins and the spike protein. To test for the anti-SARS-CoV-2 IgG or IgM antibody, apart from the antigens and the antibody that I mentioned, uh, we also have the anti-human IgG and the anti-human IgM for capture or detection purpose. So uh, in the summary, GenScript is offering a complete solution for the molecular diagnosis and a serology-based test, including uh, the primers and props as a raw material for qPCR detections, the plasmid for the positive control, 
as well as a readily used qPCR detection assay. The proteins and antibodies for the, uh, for the uh, serial based test develop, uh, development assay, as well as for the use, uh, readily use of an ELISA detection kit. So here I show you the services and products of what GenScript could have offered, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you guys can go to this website uh, for more detailed information. So now I would like to switch gear a little bit and discuss about the drugs and uh, vaccine development for the COVID-19. Given the rapid global spread of the COVID-19, the scientists have been in a race to develop the vaccine to prevent the patients to contract the virus and therapies to treat the patients. In the late January, the Coalitions for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations had announced the initiations of three programs to develop uh, the vaccines against the novel coronavirus. The goal of this program is to advance the COVID-19 vaccine as quickly as possible. And according to the report, uh, the vaccine development uh, will build on the existing partnership, including the Innovio company, which aims to deliver the DNA-based vaccine candidate against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. In addition to this, uh, they are also in a phase two clin uh, clinical trials for the vaccine candidates against the MERS virus. The University of Queensland has also been reported to have their first vaccine candidates ready and, had, uh, and are now uh, further developments before uh, the official preclinical trials. A new partnership has also been formed with the Moderna, uh, which, uh, which has engineered an mRNA vaccine candidate uh, against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So I believe all of you are asking, when will the vaccine be ready? So uh, this is the report. This article that, uh, that is being reported uh, just recent uh, last week, I think uh, last week Friday. So uh, the Novavax, uh, which is a Maryland-based biotech company, has been reported to have several candidates ready to enter the human trials this spring. Uh, the Moderna, which I mentioned earlier, uh, they have entered a phase one clinical trial on March 16. Uh, on the other end uh, of the world, China has also received the regulatory clearance to start their phase one study with a non-replicating vector-based vaccine. And other phase one trials of the nuclear acid vaccines are also expected to start in April. Nevertheless, uh, there are over 100 companies and institutes are involved in the vaccines and drug development globally. And these vaccine candidates include uh, the DNA-based vaccine, uh, the genetic engineered uh, virus vectors that can carry the SARS-CoV-2 genes, uh, the recombinant proteins or the mRNA-based vaccine. On the other hand, with the understanding of uh, the structure of the virus and its entry mechanisms, uh, the researchers are also uh, working hard to, for, uh, to develop the antiviral drugs by developing a proteins or an antibody to block the binding between the ACE2 receptor and the receptor binding domain. So this includes the development of the antibodies that against the ACE2 receptor, as well as the neutralizing antibodies that, um, that were blocked the virus surface as protein. In fact, uh, some of the studies have also shown that the neutralizing antibodies on the S proteins can reduce the severity of the lung pathology in the non-human primate followed by the MERS virus infection. So uh, this is uh, the directions that are currently what the researchers are working on. So, okay, here are a list of the companies that I found are involved in the vaccine and the drug development against the COVID-19. For example, the Sanofi, uh, which used a recombinant DNA platform in order to rapidly manufacture the large amounts of the coronavirus antigens that can be formulated uh, to stimulate the immune system against the virus. And the GeneRex, they utilize the immune system activation technology in order to generate a series of the synthetic amino acid peptides that can imitate the virus epitopes. And recently, the partnership is formed between the Arcturus and the Duke NUS from the Singapore 
to utilize the star uh, technology platform and the lunar platform in order to produce the proteins inside the human body. And the VIR uh, synthesized more than 350 of the silenced RNA as well as the antibodies uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to come up with the, uh, the vaccines to, uh, the, against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And last but not least, uh, the Johnson & Johnson has partnered up with BADA in order to leverage its manufacturing and accelerate its adeno, uh, adenovirus uh, development and then uh, the manufacturing in order to accelerate the vaccine development. So uh, while the researchers are scrambling to develop a vaccine, the GenScript has come in to help the researchers to accelerate the vaccine development with our proprietary technology. A very classic sample that I show here is the Novavax, uh, which is a biopharma company that based in Maryland, and as I mentioned, which focus on developing the next generation vaccines that known as the nanop uh, nanoparticle vaccines for serious infectious disease. Uh, the objective of their research is to plan to insert the full length of the spike gene into baculovirus virus in order to produce the coronavirus spike protein. So uh, as we know that it is very laborious and uh, time consuming in order to uh, synthesize the entire full length of the gene. But with our in-house technology, the GenScript managed to uh, synthesize the full length of the spike genes uh, within three days and help uh, the Novavax to accelerate their vaccine development. So this piece of the information had also been published in the Nature. So also, um, I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce you that you know, the GenScript is also providing a one-stop antibody drug development solutions, include the antibody drug discovery, the antibody engineering, and other services. Uh, by using our Bacon single cell platform, we are able to help the researchers to shorten their times in the antibody drug discovery. So here are the other services and products that support from the GenScript. Uh, we have a different platforms include the human knife library, the single domain knife library, the Bacon single B cell platforms, as well as the hybridoma platforms in order to help the researchers in antibody drug discovery, and then the platforms that use for the in vitro bioassay, uh, and also the peptide library for peptide sequ sequ screening and a customized oligo pool for synthesis of thousands of user-defined sequences simultaneously. So um, before I end my presentation today, uh, these are the services and products um, that uh, GenScript is offer. So GenScript uh, is actually offering a full, a wide range of the solutions and products that I mentioned in here for, uh, in order to help the researchers in their uh, assay development as well as the virus and drug development. So here yeah, I would like to thank um, for everyone's attention and I'm welcome for any of the questions. Okay, thank you Dr. Edward for the presentation. Now we'll attend to some questions from the floor right now. The first question, has GenScript detection kits has been used in hospital in which country or only in research samples thus far? How long is the turnaround time for the test results? COVID-19 patients have... Oh, sorry, uh, there's a... Is this a long question? Okay. Yes. So the second question, COVID-19 patients who have recovered are known to have immune from, from further infection. What kind of drugs have been used on them and that, lead, that leads to this? Understand that there are no drugs for COVID-19 currently instead of... Anti-HIV drugs are used instead. Is there any side effects? Right, uh, so there are two questions here. So the, uh, mm -hmm. I will just answer the one by one. So the first one is um, our detect, uh, about our detection assay. So uh, for everyone information, uh, our detection assay is actually a research use mm -hmm. only at the moment, but we are currently uh, partner up with um, the third uh, parties, which is a laboratory labs, in order to test the sensitivity and specificity of our detection assay. Uh, using the clinical uh, samples. So uh, understanding that uh, due to this uh, outbreak, uh, a lot of the regions, they are actually, um, uh, the government actually 
approved for the use of this detection assay due to the imaging, uh, uh, due to the uh, emergency. So uh, once uh, this test have been uh, have been approved, uh, the test on the clinical samples. So our test can be used for the uh, clinical uh, cl uh, clinical usage. And as far as I know, uh, there are two. Uh, currently, there are a few countries that are in collaborations with GenScript, uh, including the India, including Malaysia. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, this is what we are uh, currently working on. Uh, with regards to the second questions uh, about the uh, anti uh, antiviral drug, uh, yes, uh, here I show you a slide about some of the drugs that are currently being used and uh, is currently in the phase three trial. Uh, the first one is the uh, Remdesivir, uh, which is an anti uh, antiviral drug, and then uh, Lopinavir and the Ritonavir, which is also um, an antiviral drug that uh, they can. Uh, they are currently testing their effects uh, on uh, the, against the coronavirus. Uh, and also, uh, and also another drug that I forgot to mention here is uh, you know recently I just come across one of the articles. Uh, they are currently test. Uh, they have they have found that uh, you know just now when I mentioned the entry mechanisms of the coronavirus is through the binding of the SARS uh, of the spike protein to the ACE2 receptor, but they also find that um, uh, the the SARS-CoV-2 has an affinity to bind with the CD147. So uh, some of the, uh, the pharmaceutical company, they are testing on a drug called the Meplazumab, which is an anti-CD147 drug, and to uh, look uh, and investigate uh, study on their effect. Okay, thank you, Dr. Edward. So the mm -hmm. next question, uh, John's group has shown that a Sherlock-based test can detect as low as 10 copies per microliter for S gene and 100 copies per microliter for ORF1 AB gene. Can qPCR detect as low as this or qPCR assay is more sensitive? Uh, well, unfortunately, um, with the, the recent data that, uh, that I obtained from our R&D team, uh, the uh, the limitation of the detection I say is a uh, one thousand to five thousands of copies. Okay, thank you, Dr. Edward. Mm -hmm. The next question: How come CDC and WHO can claim different targets for determination of positive results in RT PCR? Okay, so uh, this is a very good question. So actually, uh, when we start to um, promote uh, this uh, detection assay, they are actually, uh, we receive a questions and ask about the sequences. Uh, so uh, why, why only these three genes and why we can't actually target the other genes? Um, actually, uh, what I would like to highlight here is, and I didn't actually mention in my presentation, at the time when the WHO designed these primers and probes for the detections, uh, the genomes of the SARS-CoV-2 virus had not been studied. And therefore, these primers and probes were actually designed based on this, uh, the SARS-CoV virus that happened in uh, during the SARS uh, epidemic. So as you can see that there are actually two probes that targeted uh, the RDRP genes that I mentioned. Uh, let me let me put it back. Mm. Let me show you the slide. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, if you guys look at the sequence here, so the RDRP genes, uh, there are two probes that target the RDRP genes. Uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, these probes are, they have a different functions. So for the P2 probes, they're actually specifically binding to uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, SARS virus, which is a novel coronavirus. Uh, but for the P1, uh, these probes can actually bind to all of the bad related coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, as well as the novel, uh, as well as uh, as well as the uh, novel coronavirus. So uh, this is why, um, and also uh, currently there are other um, vendors that actually uh, come out with their own uh, primers and probes that target on the different genes. Uh, one that I know is the IDT. Uh, they have. Uh, they actually comes out with uh, the three of the uh, oligos that uh, primer sets that targets on the engine. Okay, thank you, Dr. Edward. Do you think that uh, RT PCR has issues in terms of giving false positive results? Um, 
as far as I know, uh, majority of the reports uh, that uh, we see on these days is uh, the high false negative results. They have never, uh, they have never, uh, there are no reports that show the high of uh, the false positive result at the moment. Okay, thank you. So the next question, what is the minimum amount of antibodies that can be detected by collodial gold immunochromatography strip assay? Uh, well, unfortunately, this, uh, this, uh, I'm not too familiar with this uh, strip test, so uh, I can't actually give an advice on these questions. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, after this, uh, we will actually, we will come back to you uh, with the uh, answer. Okay. The next question, how do hydro hydroxychloroquine work on the virus? Uh, this is, uh, well, uh, the hydrochloroquine is actually uh, an, a drug for, uh, for this coronavirus. Uh, the mechanisms, uh, well, uh, well, I'm not too familiar with that. So sorry, I can't actually give advice. Okay, can we'll come back to the question later after the presentation. Yep. So the next question, uh, debating from what CDC or WHO recommended regions, which mm -hmm. is the target for COVID-19, GenScript has developed against N region and RBD. Is there any specific reason for this? Uh, so which test is this one? Uh, debating from what CDC or WHO recommended region. Mm -hmm. So GenScript has developed the, uh, against N region and RBD. Is there any specific reason for this? Uh, well, the, well, I mean, uh, you know, after uh, uh, even based on this sequence, uh, we all of the companies, not only GenScript, I believe that, you know, we are actually um, looking on to improve the sensitivity and also at the, uh, as well as the specificity to increase uh, in order to optimize our, um, our, our kits, our detection uh, limitation. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a very basic reason. Okay, thank you. The next question, how do we check if the virus is mutating? Will it affect the primer binding or the primer binding region constant or less likely to mutate? Are there different COVID strains in different parts of the world? Yes, um, this is a good question. So in order to understand whether or not uh, there is a mutations in the genome, so uh, the next generation sequencing is very important to play into the part in order to, un uh, to let us to understand um, the genome, uh, the genome uh, genetic makeup of each of the, uh, of the strain. And according to uh, the last presentations that given by Professor Wang Lingfa, there are currently eight strains of the novel coronavirus around the world. But uh, uh, well, it's due to one or two deletions that, uh, that are far apart. But um, according to Professor Wang Lingfa, even though there are eight strains, but, they are, uh, but all of these strains actually work the, uh, works the same uh, in, the, in terms of their functions, that they will still use uh, the, you know, the common entry mechanisms using the spike proteins to bite against the ACE2 receptor. OK, thank you. So the next question, in serological diagnostic tests, which one do you think is better detecting the host IgM or IgG against virus or virus particle itself? Oh, okay. Uh, now, let's move to the, this slide. So uh, they are actually, uh, I mean, they are, they, uh, they are actually working two different ways. The serial based test that detects the antigens is actually using the antibody that uh, detects for the antigens. Uh, but for uh, the serial based test to detect the IgG or IgM, there's actually a lapse between uh, the, uh, the incubation period. So as I mentioned, uh, when uh, the, the humans was infected, uh, is being infected by the coronavirus, uh, this, the, our immune cells were stimulated and produced uh, specific antibodies. So as I mentioned just now, first the IgM uh, will first be detected and then for uh, uh, the IgM will be produced. And then uh, after given some time, uh, the IgG uh, will be produced by our immune cells. So, uh, and also uh, before uh, we use it to detect for the IgM or the IgG, and there is an incub uh, incubation period uh, that we uh, around five to eight days, if I remember correctly from one uh, that given by 
uh, the statement they given by one of the health ministers um, in order to produce a sufficient amount of the antibodies um, uh, that can be target uh, that can be targeted using the serial based test. Okay, thank you. The next question: Is there any chances of getting infected with COVID nineteen after getting recovered in the first reported case? Uh, well, there are there are the reports of um, about the recurrence, and uh, currently uh, there are no uh, conclusive data or any research that shows that why uh, how did uh, why and how did it happen. Uh, the then that actually comes uh, comes to the questions that are being discussed and debates recently. That you know uh, whether or not even though we comes out with the vaccines. Uh, you know how long can uh, uh, vaccines? You know how long can these vaccines that last for? And then also whether or not a single dose of the vaccinations uh, can be uh, can ensure a lifetime protections. So according to the professor Wang Lingfa um, in the previous uh, in the previous uh, webinar, uh, he mentioned that uh, for the SARS uh, you know for the SARS virus, the antibody can actually uh, the antibodies against the SARS virus can be last very long. But for this novel coronavirus, we have seen uh, the recurrence cases that happened in some other parts of the uh, of the world. So uh, the researchers are currently um, looking on well, why uh, why did it happen and how did it happen. Okay, thank you. So the next question: Please explain the importance of P1 and P2 probes in RDRP region mentioned in slide sixteen. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the same questions. You know, for the RDRP SARS P2 is a probe that specifically they recognize the novel coronavirus, whereby uh, the P1 probe is, uh, can actually use, uh, can cover a range of the all of the coronavirus, uh, uh, coronavirus, uh, the SARS virus, as well as uh, the novel coronavirus. Okay, thank you. Uh, you mentioned that uh, neutralization assay. Are you aware of any companies currently working on this? The neutralizing antibody? Um, yes. The neutralizing antibody. Yes. Let me show. Uh, I show actually there is a slide at the end. Um, yep. So uh, it's not shown in here. Yeah. Um, well, for these questions, uh, well, unfortunately, I thought uh, well, the the company name is actually listed in this list. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I came across the company name uh, just few days ago, but uh, I didn't list it out here. Yeah. I mean, I can I, I can come back to you with the, the company name. Yep. Okay. We'll come back to this question again. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll attend to the last question. How yep. does the qualitative RT PCR detection helps physician to come to conclusion about the presence? Or absence of COVID nineteen, since it's qualitative, not quantitative. Right. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I actually talk about uh, this, uh, the serial based test and uh, the nucleic acid based detection as, as well as, uh, and also discuss about the advantages and the disadvantages. Uh, given uh, the problems and also the issues with the high false negative rates uh, these days. Um, we can't know. Uh, we are no longer can depends on one single test for now. In my opinion, uh, we should actually take the advice from the experts that we should combine both the PCR-based test as well as the serial test in order to have uh, to increase the sensitivity as well as the specificity in order to confirm the infections. Okay, thank you, Doctor Edward. So, yep. um, two times constraint. We'll end the Q and A session over here. So for those questions that we didn't get to answer just now, I'll email the answers to Dr. Edward and then I'll email back to you. So thank you, Dr. Edward, for the presentation today and also to all of you who joined us today. I hope you find this session useful and beneficial. So thank you for joining us again and have a nice day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.